Good morning. It is my privilege today to do our devotional. Um, this is going to be aired on Monday, August 31st. Today is Thursday, August 27th. Just putting that in time perspective here. It's going to be about relief, I, uh, about how to handle anxiety, how to get relief from anxiety. I know we've spoken a lot about anxiety lately, but you know, 2020, this year is unique. So maybe it warrants another message on anxiety. Um, one of the longest years ever. It might be four, five, six years rolled into one. It's just interesting. I'm pretty sure the 2020 at some point in time down the road will become an adjective, you know, and people look back and they go, oh, don't go all 2020 on me. It's going to happen. You know it. I know it. Um, but uh, a lot of what I'm going to say today um, comes from a sermon that I listened to this past Sunday. So it's not mine. And you all know that, uh, that I very honestly have mentioned before that the best work I do is somebody else's work. So, hey, with that, with that perspective, um, we are going to talk about how to handle anxiety. And we're going to use Jesus as an, exa as an example. Because I know as Christians, sometimes we feel um, that if, we if we're feeling anxious, it's almost like we're letting God down and we don't have, we don't have enough faith. Um, even, even, even anxiety might be a sin. Well, the answer is to those three things. No, we're not letting God down. No, we're not, not exhibiting faith. I know that's a double negative. Uh, English was not my greatest subject in school. But, and it's not a sin. Uh, Jesus experienced anxiety, and why wouldn't he? He knew what was going to happen to him. Think about that. A perfect being who had never been, never been apart from his father was going to become sin to the extent, I mean, literally become sin to the extent that his father was not going to be able to look at him. He was going to be separated from his father. Think about the anxiety that created. He knew that was going to happen. So, how did Jesus handle that? Interesting. Look into the Bible. Start in Mark 14. After, after the Last Supper, the first thing Jesus did, he starts talking. He handled anxiety by speaking. Now, I know a lot of us do that. My wife, Santa, when she walks into a room, she can carry a conversation. She just starts talking. I love walking in there with her because I don't have to say a word. I can just kind of melt into the background, and I know that she's going to carry the whole thing. She's a great conversationalist. That's half of the truth. The other half is that she talks because she's anxious. Jesus started talking. Who did he talk with? That's important. He picked out godly friends. So, number one, speak with godly friends. Who did he grab? Peter. John, James, he said, hey, buds, we're going to go out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane stands for crushing, by the way. We're going to go out there. I need you guys with me. I need you guys with me tonight. So he spoke with godly friends. He said, look, I'm going to pray. I need you guys to sit here while I pray. And Mark 14 tells us that Jesus became, that Jesus became deeply distressed and troubled. But he spoke honestly to his friends. Honestly. I think sometimes as Christians we don't. Sometimes people will ask us how we're doing. We're going, oh, praise God, I'm great. When the truth of the matter is we're not so great. Jesus spoke honestly with his godly friends. He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Wow. He felt alone, isolated. He knew what was going to happen. Why wouldn't he feel alone and isolated? And the fact of the matter is we're not built to be alone and isolated. We were created in the image of God. One of Jesus' names is Emmanuel, God with us. It's the power of with. We're supposed to be in communion with God. We're supposed to be in communication with God and with each other. We're supposed to be with people. That's the way we're built. Jesus knew he was going to be alone and isolated. So, first thing he did, he spoke with godly friends. The second thing he did, he also spoke. He spoke with his father. This is where Paul comes in. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul 4, uh, Philippians 4, 6, where he says, you know, be anxious about nothing, but in everything, prayer and petition, take it, take it to the Lord with thanksgiving. Take your request to the Lord with thanksgiving. Paul addressed anxiety. It is a very, very real thing. And Jesus, the second, the second thing that he spoke with, he spoke with his father through prayer, through prayer. If it's big enough to be anxious uh, about it's 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 big enough problem to pray about. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. If it's big enough to be on your mind and troubling you, it's big enough to be on God's heart. And if you pray about it, God is going to respond. He's going to respond. So Mark 14, 35, Jesus went a little bit further into the Garden of Geth Gethsemane, and he fell to the ground and prayed to his Father, take this cup from me. He spoke to his Father. Honestly. Honestly. 
said, I don't like this. I don't know. I don't like what's going to happen. If there's any other way, please, 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 please find it. I do not like this. Take this cup from me. He was honest. The third thing he spoke to is feelings. Feelings are real. Okay. People say, hey, follow your heart. Trust your feelings. You know, I don't think we should always trust our feelings. The truth with me is I've got some pretty whacked out feelings from time to time. If I, if I trusted my feelings, uh, they would lead me down, down, down a pretty dark path from time to time. Um, so I, I say, don't do that. They would use feelings. You're not the boss of me, you know, whatever, you know, but you've got to get those things under control. And Jesus said, take this cup from me, but feelings, feelings, if there's no other way, if there's no other way, your will, Father, not mine, be done. Feelings, I hear you, be quiet. Father, your will, not mine, be done. He didn't want to suffer. He was anxious. He spoke to his friends, his godly friends. He prayed to his father. He spoke to his feelings. Had a wonderful opportunity yesterday to go over to Overholzer Elementary, which opened this morning. The entire Putnam City School District did uh, virtually this morning. And the principal set up a prayer walk with his teachers and some people from St. Mark's and himself. So what did the principal do? He gathered godly friends around him. He prayed to his father. <laughs> He had to take his principal name tag off because, you know, you can't do that. Separation of church and state and all that stuff. And I'm pretty sure I did that wrong. And the Catholics would say, hey. But prayed to his father. And then also he got his feelings under control. So, Father, thank you for giving us the blueprint of your Bible. Thank you for giving us the example of your son. who shows us how to handle anxiety in these times of incredible social unrest. Social unrest. Racial injustice. I mean unreal natural disasters, a hurricane, category four hurricane just slammed into the southwest Louisiana coast, wildfires in California, pandemic. But Jesus has given us the example of how to handle our anxieties. Gather with godly friends, pray to you, get our feelings in check. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.